hello everyone. Uh, I hope everybody is doing good, keeping safe. As the COVID-19 has hit us, you know, a lot of us are impacted, employees are being laid off, and the capitalist system seems to come down crashing. And the most affected are the most vulnerable and the most poor and the underprivileged people of this world. And this makes you question the uh, reliability of the capitalist system that we usually so much rely on. So I started thinking about, you know, if there should be a alternate economic system. And when you think of alternate economic systems as opposed to capitalism, you know, Marxism, socialism, and all of these terms come to your mind. And one book that I read on that was Towards a New Socialism. It was a brilliant book. It was a perfect education that helped me break down, you know, all of these uh, myths that are associated to these terms, understand what it really is, understand what, what was wrong with, you know, USSR and all these past experiments of socialism and why they were not the purest or the best form of socialism. Uh, and today I am really very honored to have the co-author of the book Towards the New Social Socialism uh, with me, Paul Cockshot. Paul, thank you very much for joining me. It's a real honor. I'm really, uh, you know, thankful. I can't say enough about you, but I think because we have a shortage of time, I've cut down to a lot of you know introduction and whatever I wanted to say, but to say the least, Paul is a computer scientist and a political economist. Paul, welcome to the show. Hi. So Paul, the, one of the questions is that with this COVID-19 and previous crisis that we've seen, we've always seen that uh, it takes a very long time for capitalism to recover from it. And the poor, the underprivileged are always, you know, at the bottom. They, you know, they take years and years to get back to their normal. And I want to understand if there was a socialist system in place instead of capitalism around the globe right now, how it would help different people. So let's start with how it would help the employees uh, that are getting laid off and that are not able to bring food on the table. Okay. Well, you have to... take into account that human work is the source of value in an economy. And in a crisis like this, the crisis is caused by the fact that people have to self-isolate. And the self-isolation means that a lot less work is done. So objectively, there is less produced and less value produced. But suppose you have a system where everyone is a public employee. Um, there is no need, therefore, for anyone actually to be fired or to lose their job. They can be sent to, to work from home or to stay at home if they can't work from home. But there is a corollary from that that because the economy as a whole is producing less because people are working less, because less value is being produced, everybody would have to take some cut in income because it genuinely is a lot of things that would otherwise be being made that are not being made. Right. Um, on the other hand, certain essential parts of the economy have to be kept going. So food production has to be kept going, the health service has to be kept going, and also um, power, utilities, things like that have to be kept going. But the corollary of these other things, many sectors shutting down, like tourism, air travel, non-essential shops shutting down, is that, in principle, people can survive on less income than they would require if all these shops and businesses, uh, sorry, activities were open. They wouldn't be businesses, but if these activities were open. So everyone would have to take a cut in income, but no one would be made unemployed. Uh, to right. some extent, the pressure of the events has forced governments, at least in Europe, not in, in America, to take some steps towards that. I mean, the British government claims it's guaranteeing 80% of people's 
um, wages up to the median wage. Um, the actual ability to do that, because not everyone is in regular full-time employment. There's lots of people on, uh, in the gig economy or self-employed who are not getting the, the guaranteed 80% of their wages, which the state is supposed to be guaranteeing. So right. the bigger the informal sector of the economy, the fewer people who have regular full-time employment, the worse the situation is going to be. Mm -hmm. So you're saying when, when everybody has to take a salary cut, basically, because it will be centralized, because there would be a central body that will be governing it, it'll also be more balanced, I believe, and more fair, as opposed to people just getting fired and, on, in one sector and other people just having their jobs completely, right? There's no, there should be no need for people to be fired. I mean, they Correct. should be furlough, furloughed until and given right, enough right. to live on until... Uh, it's possible for them to return to work. Thank you very much for for that answer, and that's kind of eye opening. I don't I don't think a lot of people would have thought about this that there could be a situation where you could completely avoid people getting laid off. Uh, it will just have to be a job cut, or or sorry, a salary cut, and that salary cut would be made in a more fair manner, looking at you know what somebody needs and you know who's who can take a bigger hit as opposed to who can take a lower hit. You, you, you've got to retain the situation whereby the people who are actually still working are actually don't get such a big cut as those who are not working. Uh, because it would be unfair on those who are still working if they took the same cut. That is correct. So the cuts can't be just a flat one across the board. You have to take into account that people are in different situations and that people who are still working are in their lives by going out and potentially catching the disease and it would be unfair to give them the same cut. I'm sure. Now, the other thing that we saw is there was an immediate shortage of supplies that are really needed, right? Per personal protective equipment, masks, sanitizers. And at the same time, we saw a lot of people taking advantage of it, which is horrendous, right? People are like, you know, price gouging. How would a socialist system help in this situation? Well, you can see that these shortages are in part caused by the general deindustrialization of America and Europe relative to China, so that they have become entirely dependent on the PPE being produced in Chinese industry. And this is a result of 20, 30 years of policy of, of offshoring jobs to take advantage of low wages in China and in the process, removing the industrial capacity that's required in an emergency. On the other hand, if you look at countries which have retained their industrial base, like China, Korea, Germany, those countries are able to deal with the situation because they have sufficient of their own productive capacity to step up the production of these these goods and that that was achieved very quickly in china but by redirecting um factories towards the production of medical goods of a wide variety of types that were needed i know there's a shortage of time but again it was an honor thank you very much i i highly appreciate your time and, oh and we'll God. catch up I, 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 thank you okay. thank you very much Let paul have a good day Bye. Yep. Bye.